I will not. I do a recess. This is too long. All right. What's that sound? It's too loud. It's too loud. Oh, microphone is here. Oh, I think he will need it. Well, I guess it's working. Hello, my name is Rob Tidal. I'm the creator of the Golden Age VR going back to 6050. Um, it's a great project. Last year I was here as uh, well. I talked about uh, the history of the project, why I'm creating it, uh, what my vision is, uh, why I love that golden age of the Holland. Um, and I was pretty excited. I was talking uh, half an hour about uh, yeah, uh, how, how it started with things and uh, the challenges and everything like that. Um, and now I'm back, because I said last year I created my whole project in uh, Blender Cycles. It was a pre-rendered uh, scene, what meant to be a 3D movie. And during the process when almost everything was done, uh, I got in touch with the Oculus Rift. And my mind was blowing away. I thought, I created this 3D movie and now Oculus Rift is coming. And that's so awesome what to do about it. So I had a discussion with the people I work with and say, I think this is the thing uh, to do, to change. And I said, that's okay. So that was my talk last year. Um, and now I'm here back. So what I will do oh, is I'll make a short uh, introduction about the project, uh, showing the latest teaser. I guess it's now working with sound and everything included. Uh, project challenges, because we have a lot of that. Uh, what kind of engine and how VR space is working. Future VR development with my company. And if there's some time left, there's time for questions. I don't know if there's time left. So, yeah. I get inspired by these beautiful paintings. Uh, it hits me and it uh, gives me always uh, thinking about how to get that experience to get back in time and walk around at lovely, seeing these lovely buildings and people there, beautiful time. Um, yes, as always, uh, <laughs> it would be. I got in touch with a Dutch museum. Uh, it's a place in Horn in the Netherlands. And my previous project was in 2011. I created 22 3D environments from the Golden Age. And uh, they showed it in, an, in a nice room. And uh, yeah, people loved it, but same with me. We thought we want to go into that world, and we start with that. So me and the director of the museum have the same vision. What we want is going back in time. And we thought about it in this project, how we will do that. And uh, what we're now doing is we're developing 34 chairs, as you can see on the right. It's a VR arcade machine including the Oculus Rift with uh, HP uh, workstations, the best of the best, uh, good GPUs from uh, NVIDIA 980 to make that experience. It's going to be epic. It's, uh, it's a project for the next couple of years. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're almost done. Uh, the only thing what needs to be done right now is uh, getting everything in place. So we started a couple of weeks ago crowdfunding in the Netherlands. You don't know that crowdfunding website, but we wanted to have 32,000 euros extra to yeah, buy all these chairs. And we're almost there. We have two weeks left, and uh, we always get the money. That means the people in the Netherlands want to see this project. They want to go in that VR space and see the golden age. And uh, I want it as well. So things are getting pretty good. Um, what I will, sh yeah, the Golden Age VR it's inspired by paintings was the key uh, to make it happen. Um, working with Blender and Unity software, very important to know is that there was no Golden Age VR uh, when there was no Blender or Unity. Blender gives me the possibility to start as an independent artist. Uh, I didn't have to buy expensive license. I was very young. I could start with Blender, building my first scenes. And now we have the Golden Age VR. It's, it's incredible. Uh, together with a very nice community where we can 
work together, ask questions. It's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. And that's the same for Unity. A lot of people are working with Unity because there is a free version and, uh, and we can help each other, and that's great. So thanks to these two programs, there is the Golden Age VR. I love that. So next, the Golden Age VR teaser. It's a pretty bit bright on the screen. I don't think we can dim the lights, but uh, can we can? It will be awesome. So it's a real-time teaser that I captured. I have to make sure that we already have it loaded here in the playlist. Can you dim the lights? Thank you. So you can imagine that I love that golden. Oh, <laughs> go away! It's enough. You can imagine that I, I really love that the time. And what you see is is what you get. You can walk there in that beautiful space. So um, I'm still fine tuning uh, some small bits, including more characters and uh, looking for the right balance to uh, to launch. So. Project challenges, that's a good one. I had one year to rebuild the project to make it uh, VR ready. So imagine I have never worked with a game engine, uh, never worked with people who were into that. I had that Cycles project, I had these, uh, all these buildings and, and characters that were created in Blender, but were not working with, with Unity. So. Uh, uh, what I had to do, I had to rebuild all these buildings. They were uh, yeah, very high poly. So I could throw them in the bin <laughs> and reconstruct it. So that takes a lot of time. Uh, new ch character design and um, pre-rendered versus real-time gaming world challenges. Uh, what do we have here? Here's an example. 
I don't know if the first count is visible. I think there is. So the building on the left. Uh, the building? Yeah. The building on the left, you can see it has around 35,000 vertices, and the one on the right has around 4,000. So that transformation, you maybe think, how the heck does he use 35,000 vertices for it? I was not organized. I used texture sizes from 2,000 by 3,000 pixels and stuff like that, no tileable textures. Because when I had the scene, I put all the thing together and hit render in cycles, and after a couple of hours, I had renders or movie scenes. But when you work with a game engine, it needs to be powered very, very fast. So when I put these buildings there on the left in Unity, I had around a couple of frames and stuff like that. So it was horrible. So, and it was also, I had to look for a new style. So that building there on the left, uh, was looking very ugly in, in a game engine. When you get very close in your space, you, you have to use a kind of a design that, that matches with it. So that was a, a trial and error process, what was pretty challenging, but uh, very fun as well. You're learning a lot. So I forgot more examples. Oh, maybe you can switch. Oh yeah. So this is a sample of a building uh, with LOD, level of detail. So the one on the left has around 800 vertices and the one on the right 4,000. You can almost not really see, yeah, you can see the difference. But um, it works really well when you are walking around, it's, it's, it's changing each level. And uh, yeah, when you have some, some places where you can see 50, 60 houses, it's a lot of, uh, it asks, asks a lot from your GPU. And when you work with uh, baked textures and this kind of organization, uh, organization it uh, really worked out well. So, uh, but yeah, that was also a trial and error process. When you are getting used by using, uh, well, when you're not really organized, and this is really uh, powerful. So, whoop. yeah, this is raw footage from Blender. So, from me last year when I was here. So it's a viewport, a uh, few. Um, the fun is, when I made a render, it took me around 30 minutes and I had one frame. Of course it looks awesome when the, the nice cycles render is, is lighting everything beautiful. But uh, Unity needs for development kit too, needs 150 frames in one second. So I had to do some other magic. Uh, yeah, this is raw footage from Unity. I can put it away, yeah. and um, yeah, because of the use here, a lot of water reflections, I had 100 frames, but when I remove this water reflection and replace it by some other shaders, what looks pretty good as well, I get 150, and uh, yeah, that's great, that's looking pretty cool. Um, character development, that was a fun thing as well. I had some character artists uh, who create some characters. i put this off. And it was not working in Unity when exporting it. They were looking like this all the time. And um, yeah, we, we were talked about it. Uh, it was created by Bruno. Uh, to create new characters and to solve something or create a pipeline to create the characters and putting them well in Unity. And that took a while, but in the end, it's, it's working pretty good. I think Bruno created a, a short video where you can see some movement. I will show that if that thing goes well. Charco walk cycle, yeah. Document. Oh, yeah. Right click. Oh, God. Oh, it's going to be so angry. It's going to be angry on me. Okay. I'm a noob with this. Oops. Wrong one. So, what do you do? Yeah, I just control click. We'll give you a. Yeah. So that's looking uh, sure. pretty awesome, smooth uh, animations, and uh, yeah, it works well in Unity. Oh, this is captured in cycles, but uh, we have the the low poly version in uh, 
Oh. And Blender. Alright, you can close, you can get away. I've got more movies, but I'm going to hide them. So... Another thing that's uh, pretty interesting... Uh, well, I was getting used to creating worlds in cycles. And um, when I worked with the VR, sp I call it VR space, because you're really into that world. It's, uh, it, it, it's really different. Because when you create props or buildings, you sometimes use a lot of bump mapping, flat surface. But when you are in that VR space, you want to feel depth. You want to feel uh, everything, like you, you're walking and you look everywhere and you need detail. And uh, what you actually want is uh, a, a low resolution world so you can have a high frame rate. So that's, you have to find the right balance. And that's uh, really challenging. Uh, frame rate, that was also a real challenge. Uh, the first scenes that I created was in January with DK1. This is a very dark image, but um, this scene was uh, with props, nature environment, but no characters with a resolution of 1280 by 800 and I get around 90 frames. And what I actually wanted was scenes with 100 buildings and including characters. So I was kind of stressed out, so I had to invent uh, techniques to uh, make it uh, yeah, work smoother. So this is the final scene and I have a movie clip if I can open it. Uh, what, what has everything included and with HD resolution and we're now getting the 150 frames table and uh, uh, that's really cool. So uh, Jonathan, can you help me one more time? <laughs> I was going to get stretched out. Uh, can you open the, yeah, just this the uh, last one? Last one. Yeah. Oh, demo. So you can demo scenes. Uh, demo scenes, okay. So, first movie clip. Oh, it's really dark. But as you can see, I had around 30 frames for left and right eye. It was really not enough with DK1. So I think, oh, I, how can I solve this, man? <laughs> it, was, it was horrible. Um, with DK1, it, it was, instead it was not a high frame, okay, but when DK2 was arriving, you had, a, with low persistence, a kind of a ugly jitter. So you have to run with 150 frames, not 148. Uh, it was kind of a horror. And this is a movie clip, which shows you that we have a very stable frame rate. Uh, it's, it's showing 60 frames, because uh, I could not record this video on the direct AA, HMD, and that's only possible with 75 frames. But yeah, just watch it. This is how it looks like when you walk in your space. Ah, I will quit it. Yeah. Ooh, that's enough. Right. Where are we? Um, yeah. And that's what I said before, you have to avoid the flat surface, everything needs depth. And I think when you work with VR, you have to think different. And with different, I mean, it's, it's not that you're generating a, a game world like uh, the games, how we see them today. But what, what I like to challenge is uh, creating uh, 
places with like you can enter buildings and you can watch through windows and you play with that thing to uh, to having really the idea you are in, in in another world so it's not walking around like a large environment so I'm trying to keep my scenes a little bit uh, small but there is a lot of things to do and really almost everything has that and that's uh, that's nice when uh, when you're walking in VR. Yeah, and uh, textures needs a high resolution, and that is a little bit battling with when you baking everything, because that's low resolution. Uh, and when you get close to an object, re you really want to see every detail, and that's so much fun. But at the same time, you, you're getting that challenge in, in Unity you have, or in every game engine you have draw calls. And uh, yeah, when you reach, I think in Unity is around 2,000 draw calls, you get jitter or you get low frame rate. So uh, I'm getting a lot of feedback for you have to put more stuff in your scenes and make it bigger. And then I think, yeah, but I'm battling with these with these uh, uh, limits. But uh, it, it's it's fun uh, playing with that. Uh, and one more thing, when you're working with uh, VR, uh, is that you have to keep things bright. Because bright scenes uh, will uh, fix, how you say, you get a lot of depth when things are bright. I experimented with weather system where you get nice rain effects, and then I mentioned that uh, the depth feeling was kind of fading away. Uh, so I'm now not doing that and uh, keeping the things a little bit bright. Uh, yeah, that's what I mentioned also. Uh, when you're working with this, uh, try to keep things small and put a lot of detail in it and not uh, huge sheets where you can walk everywhere and uh, yeah, that's, it's, it's a bit boring. You really want to play with that VR effect. Um, my further VR development plans is um, the possibilities with VR. For me, this is kind of a totally new world to play around. It's like uh, you're having uh, the first Nintendo computer with these graphics. For me, it's just like it's a new age for, for, for uh, content creation uh, that we don't know anything about it. And it's just experimenting what, what is cool. And, and when you look in the future, I think there are so cool things possible, and uh, that's that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm playing around, and I'm not thinking that we are there. We are there yet. That's uh, that's a funny thing. Um, yeah, that's mean. We're now launching in December with this uh, project. I'm going to be the first in the world where with, with 34 machines. It's going to be epic. But it doesn't mean we're already there yet. Uh, this is just the beginning. Uh, it's maybe just this little bit and we want to go there. And that means we have to experiment, uh, creating better content, better, better characters and, and uh, uh, entertainment in the scene. That's what we now are also doing. We, we launch this project and we keep it very basic. So we won't give people all the possibilities to have a quest system or storyline or other pushing factors. We just want to show them what it is, how to is to walk in your space, sitting there on, on a bench and, and looking around. That is what this project is about. Enjoy that, that fear and, uh, and not just pushing everything like you can do, do everything. That's, because that's not really working. You can see Oculus is improving that, that, that helmet like they want more pixels and they want higher frame rate. And I think that is important, but you also have to look at the content. It's so important. I mean, I think you can have a fantastic uh, experience with DG2 if you create the right content for it. So, uh, yeah, I think that people have to watch that as well. Um, yeah, I'm already working on new projects. Uh, things are going really well. And that means I'm always looking for new new team members. So if you think, oh, I really like that, that PR stuff, and, uh, or game design, Unity, or anything else, uh, let me know. You, I'm always interested in, uh, in new people. We have now a small team with six people. Most of them are character artists, but also both creators and riggers. Um, yeah, let me know and contact me, and maybe the, we can work together. Are there questions, or are we out of time? No questions.
That's a, that's a good question. Uh, I'm trying to keep everything in Blender, but um, I had one year, and I don't say things are impossible. Everything is possible, but I had to do something, and um, Unity is giving great solutions for VR right on this moment. Um, and that's what, what, what I'm taking. I, I wanted to release this uh, right now. And when I, was, I had to focus on Blender, I think it was very hard to make it this quality what I have right now. So it was for me not the best solution, but the, the only solution for me in that moment to create what I wanted to have. And of course, of course I want to create these things in Blender. Um, and Blender is, 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 I'm still working in cycles, creating projects, but right now I don't have the possibilities or the knowledge to get that out of Blender. It's just I'm not good enough to do that. So, of course, if, if there are people who say, wow, we want to improve that and make that, well, I'm the first one who was willing to create VR stuff with Blender, but that was not the time and not the moment to do that, but uh, yeah. So, uh, a bit of a question, a uh, technical question. Uh, you had a um, point there that uh, argued that we couldn't have flat surfaces on models in a VR environment. Yeah. Now, um, couldn't you bypass this limitation by implementing tools that were used very much in the game uh, scene, such as Parallax occlusion mapping. Or, uh... Yeah, that, that's, that's a very good question. Uh, that's a fun thing. There is a boat, including the scenes, with using a lot of tessellation. I mean, I think you think uh, you mean that. Um, I did not have the right tool. Well, I, I was not uh, skilled enough to work with that, so I keep things low profile, uh, but still, then I try to avoid flat surfaces. Uh, but yeah, with techniques like you mentioned, that that's really possible and that's what I want to introduce in further updates. Uh, so yeah, that, that's, that's a good one, right? Yeah? Hey, so you said that uh, you had uh, quite a lot of uh, quite a low FPS when you uh, have those uh, 100 buildings there. So what kind of trickery you you used to uh, overcome this? Like uh, you, you have started using uh, LODs for buildings or uh, streaming? Or... Yes, exactly. Well, I had to break my brains to to find a solution to put 150 buildings in a scene. So what I did was working with LOD, but I also used for the background really low poly buildings, maybe for every building around 100 vertices, so I can feel the background. Uh, and, and but the rest of it, it, it's all based on yeah LOD. It's switching to another level, and you still have an idea. It's a very high detail building. Uh, and that's how you fake the the, the thing that, that it's... Uh, is, that, is that an answer to your question? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, so no streaming of, of object into, like, uh, also dependent on, on uh, the distance from, uh, from the building or from the object? No, no. So just LOD? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I choose for that because when I started working, I had to create a kind of a pipeline where I was talking to it. And LOD, oh, I've never worked with that. I thought, okay, this is, uh, this is a very nice thing to, uh, to integrate. There are maybe way more uh, things to improving the scenes, but baking an LOD was the thing that I used for creating this. And uh, I'm always looking for better implementations to make it faster, so. No, 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 it's uh, the LOD system in, uh, in Unity. Yeah, but I create, of course, the LOD models in Blender. Because I, I did no modeling in Unity. Uh, it's everything in Blender. Okay. Last question. Mm. Mm. 
just quickly, very awesome project. You have created this environment and it's beautiful. And um, it would be a, a, a it would be a shitty if it's only a walking simulator. So I suggested to uh, look into games a bit and uh, in, put some content there, but not gaming content. Content. Maybe just a character approaches you and says, "Hey, look, they are making a new a new ship. Come to Dex." And then you walk with the people, and people are going there, and you see more uh, happiness in the environment. I was thinking about that. Yeah. Okay, cool. No, no sorry, but, but it was a kind of noisy, but uh, I come to you. If you're... Okay. I will come to you. Okay, cool. Thank up. you. Yeah, I understand. Sorry. Thank you very much. No, my English is sometimes... <laughs>